This is an oral history interview. The interviewer is Ryan McKinley. I am interviewing Fred Rivaza in his home in Lafayette, California. The date is March 14th, 2014, and the time is 4.10 p.m. So, um, could you tell me uh, when and where you were born? Where? When and where, yeah, where me? you were born. <laughs> uh, actually, well, I always lived here, but I was born in Berkeley at the hospital. Okay. Uh, that's the only hospital in those days. Okay. But I've lived in Lafayette all my life. And that's 79 years plus. <laughs> okay. So about 1934, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, I was reading you in the email you had sent me, your parents were originally from Italy, is that correct? Yeah, they migrated here from Italy. My dad came first uh, around the, the earthquake in the city in San Francisco at that time. And, uh, and of course, then uh, the rest is... The siblings, the brothers and sisters came, or one by one, they came over. Uh, he went back to Italy in between 1928 and 29, and that's when he got married. Okay. Okay. But uh, my dad was quite older at the time when he got mm-hmm. married. He was born in 1886. Okay. okay. So he was born. And what was your father's name? Gio, actually, they call him Bachi, but his name was Gio Bata, G-I-O-B-A-T-T-A. Okay. And so he was born in Italy, and what originally made him come to America? Just the what? What originally made him come to America? Or, well... <laughs> or what, what did he do in Italy? Uh, the the family was quite large. Okay. Uh, that was one thing. And uh, the other is, of course, to look for a better life, the main thing. And where they came from, uh, it was a heritage that they had. It would, they were dry farmers, not like farmers that you see in a valley here and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Dry farming means no irrigation and no fertilizer, and you might as well say it was organic. Okay. And so that their family had been doing that for generations, that type of Well, thing? yeah. Uh, many, uh, well, from what I know, the house that they lived in Italy, and this was back in... Oh, probably early, late 57, when I was in the service, 60. And I had an uncle over there that told me the house that had, they had, were in was in that family for 250 years. Wow. And do, is it gone now? or have, do you know No, it's still there. It's still I've, there. Okay. I've seen it. Uh, Tina's been there. Okay. She has seen it. And uh, we've been there a couple of times. And uh, we know the people there. Oh, okay. And, uh, in fact, uh, she's, uh, the, the people who live there are actually related to my mother's side, not my dad's side. Okay. Now. Now, so they purchased it from the... No, it wasn't like purchased. Or... They always leased it. Oh, okay. Right. My grandfather over there had bought a house, which was a little further up. But the original house before that, that's the original house that my father grew up. Okay. And they're the, the first seven. See, there was 14 in the family. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where is your father in that 14? Is that He was the second oldest. Second. Okay. So when he came to America, did he set out for California originally, or was he in New York originally? Or no. Uh, you you got to think of where they come from. And, mm-hmm. and you, know, you know every immigrant that came here usually brought something that they... They did, or they did, whether he was, they were in mining or this or that. Well, they were, as I told you, <laughs> farmers, but dry farming, no irrigation. This is the perfect valley in mm-hmm. Lafayette for dry farming, and nobody knows it. Hmm. Okay. So we can't, he was something of an innovator then, in a sense. Well, it's yeah. how they did it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not saying that they could survive today yeah. because... Um, uh, nowadays, in the valley, they plant and, of course, mm-hmm. they p- pull it out and put another crop right in. They didn't do that in those days. Okay. And that's why you couldn't survive doing it now. Okay. And about how long was he, I, you sort of mentioned this, how long was he in America before he went back to Italy? In the Well, he came right after, uh, right, just right after the, the earthquake. Okay. And then he went back. Uh, it was 28, 1928, okay. 29. That's when he got married. Okay. And how how did he meet your mother? Is that Was that some kind of arranged marriage, or they knew each no, other no, from before? No, no, no. Like he just seen somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Okay. No, there was no arrangement. Okay. Okay. 
And so, and what is your mother's name? Maria. Maria. Okay. And you said she is she quite a bit younger than your father. You said. Yeah, there was about twenty, twenty one years difference. Okay. Okay. And she grew up in the same area. Did she own the close by? Yeah, okay. a town close by along uh, the uh, the Riviera there, Liguria they call it, or um, the the provincia would be Savona. Do you know what her family did as well? Were they dry farmers as well? They were also dry okay. farmers, yeah. And is she? her family is large as well? The four Very large, siblings? too, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so when they got married, did they immediately come back to America? Yeah. Okay. And come back to California again? Right. Okay. And then they... Do you have any siblings yourself? Or are you the Are you the only child? No, no, no. I have no, a brother. Okay. And you're, you're the older or the younger? No, he's the he's older. He's three years older than me. Okay. So, so I guess that's 1931. He was yeah around. Okay. So they moved here, and your brother was born. And so they were always living in Lafayette since they always moved to, yeah. Okay. I've I've been here all my life. I have not left Lafayette. Okay. So do, what do you remember about when you were a young child? In Lafayette? small. Small. <laughs> <laughs> it was small farmers. Uh, it was a few houses in town, but uh, you know it was not a big town. Uh, there wasn't. There was a few stores. It was a post office, and uh, little by little, grocery stores came in. Uh, I can remember the food center, which is the building, is still there. Uh, that was built, you know, right after, uh, right after, or just before the the war, I think. And uh, and uh, then up there were uh, Long Shrug, which is CVS now. That was built a little later, and that was actually a, they called it a super saver or supermarket or something like that. That was built later. And I worked in there when I was uh, even when I went to high school. Is as uh, you know, make a little bit <laughs> <laughs> like as a checker or something. Yeah, like that. no, I was actually. Packing the fruit in there oh, and okay. putting it out. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. And growing up, would, what do you remember doing? Was it a lot of outdoor play? Did you have a lot of interaction with the few other people that lived around here? Well, most of the what we knew were the other farmers. The, mm-hmm. There was all actually uh, the the farmers mostly were all Italian. Okay. There was uh, descent. There was some a couple of Portuguese, but they were more in the hills. Uh, except for a couple of families way up in Happy Valley, they had uh, pears and and some fruit, but not actually vegetable or dry farming like uh, um, the Casos did and the Rossi's, Giglioni's, and uh, uh, Mangini's. You know the early early times and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember growing up? Do you remember any like specific friends or things you had in the community at that? Oh time? yes, oh. I, I knew. And most of them are gone now. Mm. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's, um, let's see, the castle. There's just one castle left of the of the firstborn here, like me. <laughs> Actually, of all the the families that had children, I'm probably the youngest of that firstborn here. Hmm. Okay. So we're there. Was there quite a big age gap between, for instance, you, you remember you being very young with like another family, they had a teenage son or something? Well, we're all teenager. about the same age. All about the same age. Yeah, okay. except being my dad that he got married a little later in life, uh, by rights I should be older. I should be mm-hmm. around uh, 100 now. Because <laughs> <laughs> my cousins now, the, the Rossi brothers, which they had a ranch here uh, for many years, and um, uh, they, they, my cousins, just, they all passed away. Uh, they're gone, you know. Okay. And um, there's just three of the, well, maybe a couple of more, but uh, there's just me and my brother and John Casso that's up in Happy Valley there, and that's about it, uh, the, the old people. Uh, the rest of them are all gone. Okay. Hmm. okay. And so... In that time, um, you had mentioned the CVS or was Longs at the time and things like that. Are there, just to situate the people maybe listening to this about where the, the farms may have been at the time based on, I'm not sure if you can, but based on kind of current landmarks that we have now, um, 
do you mean the current landmarks, where they were? Yeah, so like... Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I knew where they were. Yeah. I could go on and tell you almost all the property lines. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, ours was Glen Road, and then Monticello, that was all ours. And that went up into a canyon like that. And uh, the castle was up where the Laf- uh, Happy Valley Grammar School is up there. And the Mangini's were originally, the, the Mangini's were right where, um, shall we say, um, almost where uh, uh, Whole Foods is now. There okay. was a hill there, but it was taken away. Uh, but there was a little hill you drove over, and his farmhouse was right there, and he had a few acres in there that he was farming. Then later, when they took that away, he moved up, and in fact, there's an old house there, uh, past uh, there, there's an old barn there, and I think it's still there. The last time I went there, it's still there. He moved there for uh, a number of years, but he never owned it. He, he moved there and he uh, leased it, and it was owned by uh, Giglioni. And uh, so then he moved away and he bought out and uh, by Pacheco out there and bought a... Uh, a piece of land. Actually, it's between Pleasant Hill and Pacheco, right in there. And it was a very small road then. It's not mm-hmm. like it is now. But uh, uh, he farmed there. Okay. And the same way with the other property down below, where there was another Rossi there, which Guglione owned that property. And he was sharecropping also. And he stayed there, and then eventually moved over to by uh, Oak Grove. And he bought a piece of land there, and he finished out his years there. What elementary school did you go to? It was Lafayette Grammar School. It was only one. <laughs> what, what do you remember about going to Lafayette Grammar School? Well, they didn't have no uh, junior high <laughs> and no kindergarten. You started from first, you went wow. to the eighth, okay. and that's it. Then you went to high school. Okay. Do you have any like specific like specific teachers you had there? Specific events you did? Yeah, I can uh, remember all of them. Unfortunately, oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't like I didn't like the first grade teacher because she put tape all over my mouth. Right. You wouldn't do that today, wow, yeah. but that's what she did. And the reason for that, I couldn't speak English. Oh, okay. So there was this kid or uh, that I knew was my age. And, but he could understand a little English. So every time the teacher spoke, I would ask him, uh, what did she say? And, of course, the teacher came around and put the scotch tape across my mouth. <laughs> wow. That's true. Yeah. Wow. Mrs. Berta. <laughs> wow. Okay. So not not speaking English. When did you kind of master English? Was it through oh, grammar no. school? It, it, it came pretty pretty, pretty quick. quick. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny too. There was this other kid in in, uh, in uh, school with me. His name was Tanaka. He was a Japanese, the mm-hmm. only Japanese student there. And then when uh, World War II, uh, um, uh, Hideo was his name, and he got interned uh, where his family had to go mm-hmm. away. And when they started the World War II, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, I, I only seen him once. He came back after the war, but he was here only a, fir- a very short time, and he was gone. I don't know whatever happened. Hmm. Were, but he, were you close to him or anything like that? Or no, he was just someone no, in your class? Oh, okay. no. But I remember that. Mm-hmm. I got a pretty good memory. Of yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, when, so when you were in grammar school, that would have been 1940, about there? Is that yeah, approach. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so what was it like? So you would have been in about the fourth or fifth grade when... Oh, no, about no, second no. grade when the, the war started? No, I was I was very young, but I remember mm-hmm. everything. I can remember when my cousin got drafted. Um, I can remember, uh, you know, when he came home also, but that was, you know, five years later. Mm-hmm. But uh, I remember the things that went through. I remember the the... the Benicia, when the thing exploded over there because it, um, all the windows rattled in the house and also during the war, he had to, no lights. You had to close the shades and be all mm-hmm. dark, you know, so mm-hmm. there was no, you know, yeah. those kind of things mm-hmm. that they had. and uh, But stuff like that, yeah. you know, I mean, it's... Uh, but actually, to tell you the truth, uh, for us living here as being in a farm like we were, 
uh, there was no, uh, we were not had any, uh, shall we say, uh, bad things other than uh, the only thing was my dad would, became a citizen. My mother was not. Uh, she was still, you know, not, uh, not a citizen. So she was restricted to an area of so many miles. I think it was like five miles or something like that or ten miles that she could go out of there. But my father was not. He was a citizen. Hmm. So that was uh, kind of... The, was strictly enforced that she couldn't leave a certain vicinity or things like that, or it was more a, a no. They it was actually they never bothered you. Oh, okay. uh, we, you know, um, we didn't have any hardship. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You know. Yeah. Especially being on a farm, uh, you know, there's plenty to eat on a farm, mm-hmm. so we didn't have any farm any uh, to say uh, that we had any shortages of anything. Okay. Yeah. And so you went through the up to the eighth grade, so about 48 was when you left the grammar school? Yeah, I think 49 I went into the uh, high school, I believe. Yeah, because I graduated in 53. Okay. So, and you went to Akalan? Akalan. Yeah, that, um, incidentally, that school there, the Rossi brother, which he just passed away now, uh, a few, what, how long ago? About a couple of months. Yeah, he passed Angelo. He was the, in the first graduating class at Alcalani's. Otherwise, they had to go to Monte Alto before that. Okay. okay. And in your high school years, I know you were a little... Uh, your grammar school was a bit uh, sketchy for you. Um, <laughs> Not, really. That was... Not really. Not really. Okay. No, I mean, it, it was very simple because, mm-hmm. you know, the, the classes weren't big. There wasn't many kids and, you know... But I fought my way through. I didn't mm-hmm. take anything from anybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so in, in high school, do you, have you been to the high school since since you've graduated? I know it's oh, yeah. right down the road. Oh, yeah, I go there. In okay. uh, fact, I walk around it. Okay. How, do, you, do you remember how much it has it changed a whole lot since you were there? Or is it no, it hasn't changed, changed too much. Uh, they added a, a few buildings up there and, of course, the auditorium there. But... They remodeled quite a bit. They changed a little bit, but not. It, basically, it's still, you know, the football field is still where it is, and et cetera. You know, it, it hasn't changed drastically. Okay. okay. And do you have similar uh, specific teachers or things that stood out for you at, in high school as you did in grammar school? Well, I could say, yeah, a few. Um, the ones that I was associated with, or you mm-hmm. know, with, uh, but I never seen him uh, anymore. Uh, I only one I seen was uh, um, uh, Stevens. He passed away now. I heard, and he was uh, a math teacher, and then he also was a coach for uh, uh, football, and then um, he became a principal. Okay, and I think I spoke to him. Oh, I think, I don't remember exactly, but uh, he retired just before, just right after I spoke to him then. And, of course, it was a few years later. But then I heard he passed away. Okay. Okay. And did you do um, extracurricular things? Were you on the football team or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What what position? Well, I like playing defense. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And you said you graduated in 53, was that? 53. Okay. And then where did you go after high school? I went to work to, for Shell Oil Company okay. in Martinez. And uh, I went in, uh, after a year, I went into the lab over there. And, of course, in 1957, I was drafted into the service. Okay. And what... what um, I guess, what section of the service were you in? Oh, the Army. The Army. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And that, that was for the Vietnam War? or was that, no, 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 no. That was, uh, that was uh, let's see, 1957. You had the Korean War, and then uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, Vietnam War, yeah. That came, so I was in between that. Oh, okay. okay. There was no war at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And how long were you in the service? I had two years active, two years reserve, and two years standby. Okay. That's the way it was. It was six years then six years. when you were drafted. Okay. And what, 
And how did that um, affect you, like, leaving your job in Lafayette? No, I mean, uh, uh, to say no, that it harmed me, affect me. If uh, it being peacetime, uh, you know, what I did get to do is get to to go to Europe. Okay. So uh, that was a good experience that I was over in Europe. And I got to 1957, 57 or 50, right in 58, I used my leave. I had an uncle that retired from here that worked on the farm, and he was there, and I went to visit him. So I learned all about where they came from, what they did, what they did for entertainment, who lived where, because there was a lot of the Italians here. They came from the same part or very Mm -hmm. close to each other. And I've seen where all they live or where they, you know, what houses they came from. Mm-hmm. And my uncle had taken me to all those those places there. The piece, the land that they worked on, because it's not the land over there where it is. It's not big pieces. They're just little small pieces. So there's one here and one over there. And through the generations, it was split up. So, you know, they're not together too much. And where in Europe were you stationed? And when I was, I was very fortunate. That I was stationed in Kaiserslautern, Germany. Okay. Although I did go TDY to France for two and a half months because we still had soldiers in uh, in uh, France. Then they pulled all the sur- uh, the soldiers out of France. Okay. And so, when you got out, you came straight back to Lafayette after. Yeah. After you were in, so I'm still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got out, you came back and you went to work back at the Shell. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't stay too long. About a year. Okay, and you were doing the same the lab work as you. Yeah, I went back to the same thing, but uh, uh, they uh, uh, they were saying about consolidating their laboratories and. Uh, so some of it went to, at that time in Emeryville. They had a lab down there, strictly a lab, and uh, some of the stuff that we were working on went to Anacortes. Some went back to Illinois and whatever. And uh, I chose to leave, okay. so I left, and that was it. Okay. And then after you left that position, where what did I you went do to after work? That? I went to work for uh, Oakland Scavenger Company. Which was uh, basically it was all Italians down there, and uh, to become part of that company. Okay. What did you do there at the scavenger? Company? I started out working on the on the on the street on the, you know, mm-hmm. picking up a can. They didn't have no hydraulic equipment like they have today in those days. You carried it on your back. Wow. Okay. So like. Did you go to a specific? You went all around Oakland, or was specific? No, 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 no. Or? You had a route. Okay. You had a route that you did, and uh, I did that for a few years, waiting to be able to buy a share in it. But then I got injured, and uh, I had my foot crushed because they had gotten at that time they had gotten these compactors, but they were revamped from open trucks to compactors. And uh, unfortunately, somebody hit the button on there, and I got caught in it. I had my foot crushed, Mm -hmm. and um, I was off work for almost a year. But when I went back, they put me on uh, uh, the container trucks, you know, where you pick up these draw boxes around Mm -hmm. there. And um, I figured, well, I was doing pretty good, so I stayed there, and uh, I finished out in about 35 years. Okay. Okay. About when? When did you retire from there? Ninety uh, six. Uh, it's been a, well. It's about eighteen years. Okay. Okay. No. Let's see. You went into that. In your time. When did you meet your wife? It was before I went into service. Okay. That was um, uh, in probably I uh, I met her. Let's see. It had to be nineteen fifty. Four. We went together seven years because she's a little bit younger than I am. I'm five, four and a half years older than her. So we met at this Italian club down in Oakland. I used to go there, and uh, you know how guys are. And 
we met there. Okay. And she was in, of course, when I met her, she was in junior high. Oh, okay. Not in high school. Oh, junior high, okay. <laughs> and uh, so then in 57, when I got drafted, well, she still had to go to high school. So, mm-hmm. so actually, we went together about seven years. Okay. Not to say, well, we're going steady. We just, that was it. Mm-hmm. Did you keep correspondence or anything? While oh, you yeah. Were oh, yes. Like yeah. Letters and things like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And then when you came back, when you got out, you um, you married right after that, or there was about a year time? after we got married, and I got out of the service in '59. We married in '60. Okay, and she grew up in Lafayette as well. Right here, yeah. Okay. This is the same house. Oh, we're in her her yeah, family. We, house. we bought this house um, three weeks before we were married. Okay, wow. Okay, and. The only thing, uh, it's still the same house, only I added on to it. We were going to buy another house, but uh, we liked it here, so we just, I added all this on. Wow. So, and it was a, a brand new home when you bought it? or it was, No, no, it was no, 10 years old. 10 years old. The houses were built in 50. Okay. And um, I, uh, we bought it in 60. And we added on, I think it was a 1967. Or, I don't remember exactly, but it's been a while. I don't know if it's 67 or 76 or somewhere. I get some mixed up. <laughs> One there. of those years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this whole this street and neighborhood was all developed around the same time then? The yeah. Time this time. came in after uh, uh, World War II. Uh, things started moving pretty good here. And I can uh, remember my dad, the property we had. And, of course, he was getting older, and he wanted to retire. And they were raising the property. Uh, there was no city here. It was all, you know, it was under Martinez. And they were raising the taxes. And I can remember my dad saying, he says, holy crummy, they keep raising the taxes. Well, they were just farmers, you know. Mm-hmm. But the idea was almost like uh, you couldn't say it was this, but pressure was coming on to sell right. and you had the vultures out there oh well, my dad was a little smarter than that so he uh what he did we we subdivided it okay. my dad did i didn't my mm-hmm. dad did and uh subdivided that right. land right. the ranch over there they told me uh, uh heard about it that it was the oldest ranch in lafayette as far as farming now i can't vouch for that Mm -hmm. but there was a lot of farmland here but it was one of the oldest now I don't know for sure but it's just like uh, down at the history center they uh, the the lady down there told me that a lot of people go in there and ask who's got they have the oldest house in Lafayette I can't vouch for that Mm -hmm. because a lot of them were destroyed and knocked down Mm -hmm. when they developed came in but I can tell you this, the house we had was built with square nails. How's that? <laughs> and it is an old deal, one of that. So whether it was the oldest house, I'm not saying that. I don't know. Okay. So because that, the house was there mm-hmm. already when they, got the, when they bought that ranch. And they bought the ranch in 1928. Okay. 28, yeah, because how that happened was that... Um, my two uncles were farming up here on Release Valley Road, and they were uh, sharecropping, or we want to call it leasing it. And they wanted my dad to go in to with them because of the cost of the the property. You know, there wasn't much money around in those days. So my dad says he was getting ready to go to Italy. He was working for Capwell's in Oakland, which Macy's store had taken over Capwell's. I don't know if you're familiar with them. I'm familiar with Macy's, but not a... Not Capwell's. Well, there was, there was a HC, and then it became AC, or a, a, AC went to HC, whatever it was. But it was the old Capwell's. And my dad was there. He had a good job. He was a foreman there. Oh. And so he wanted to go to Italy, and they promised him that he would have his job back. Because in those days, when they took a ship back there, it was a long mm-hmm. month. Yeah. So that my uncle's wanting to buy that property. So um, um, 
my dad says, okay, I'll go in and I'll put somebody to work my share and I'll pay him out of my share and if I make something a little bit out of it and whatever, you know, <laughs> that's what happened. And he took off. And uh, so when he came back to his job down there, and he says, well, we'll give you a job, because they had changed orders mm-hmm. from HC to what they see. So they said, well, we'll give you a job, back, a job, but not the job that you had. Mm-hmm. In other words, he would have to start at the bottom. Yeah. He said, well, the heck with you. He left, and he came and took his share in the ranch, because he knew how to farm. Dry farming is a lot different than the farming you get today. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I have a daughter that, uh, uh, the youngest one, not Tina here, and uh, she's quite organic food, you know. Mm-hmm. You're not getting organic food today. Mm-hmm. Think whatever you want, but it's not organic. I was raised on it. I know what it's like. And uh, it's where you don't irrigate, you don't fertilize. You comes from the soil. You plant one crop and that's it. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. And the tomatoes in that field and that's why these these old Italians came to this valley is because the land, the, the, the earth here, all these hills and the moisture, the rain goes down and there's, it's a dark soil it retains the moisture you go in a valley you can't do that, it won't, if you haven't got fertilizer or water, you're not going to grow nothing even out in Clayton, it's all sandy soil. You might get something, but you're not going to get if you don't irrigate or fertilize. Hmm. At least irrigating. And But here it's altogether different. Uh, the mustard grass used to grow so high that they would ply that under. Like, you know, it used to go down with a 23, 22, hmm. 23 plow and plow all that under. And they would work the soil. That would be your natural fertilizer. And when they planted the tomatoes in, they would plant them like the beefsteaks. That's all they had in those days to bring to the cannery in 50-pound lugs. You couldn't put beefsteaks in the, the things they have today. They'd be all juice by the time you got there. But anyway, they would um, uh, put them down about two foot and a half to two feet in the ground. That's how deep they planted them, by hand. And they would give them one, like almost a, a pint of water. That's all. And then they put the soil to them, and they never seen any more more water after that. Hmm. That's it. And they would grow, and it would be they had them eight feet apart, and you couldn't walk in between without stepping on them. Hmm. That's the way it was, and people don't believe it, but that's the way it was. And when they did that, and to make them grow, to get moisture to them. Every week they would go through with the cultivator. That's why they plant in May feet so they can go with a narrow gauge tractor. And the cultivator, what it does, it brings the moisture up to the plant until the tractor starts. You're going to step on, hit them, you know, with mm-hmm. the track. Then you stop. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. Right. You never heard that before. No, no, I never heard. No. That's the way it was, and. This is why I say, like today, you go buy organic food. That's not organic food, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They still they use water, they use fertilizer, and they insect, insecticide. And don't forget, too, with all this export we get, we got bugs in this country that we never had before. Mm-hmm. We didn't have these kind of bugs mm-hmm. that we have today. Earwigs. We didn't have no earwigs. Yeah. But now there's earwigs all over the place. Yeah. Hmm. To getting back, um, so when your father, when they wanted him to sell the land, where did he go after he split up that land, his ranch land? After Unfortunately, my dad didn't get a chance to enjoy it. He, um, uh, he was, he, they started, they was just about, well, not through, but they started, just started the selling the ranch right after World War II in 46, and he died in 48. He didn't make it. He, had, he, you know, he passed away. My two uncles both went back to Italy. Okay. So. And then, where did your mother go at, after you? She oh. stayed here, right here in town, and she passed away uh, in um, in ninety ninety six ninety six. Okay. 
And so, what did she do after once Nothing. she moved? She <laughs> just she retired. Tired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, did that happen? So, you met your wife. You what did what did your wife do when after you guys got married? Was she housewife or no? First, uh, she worked for Bank of America for a few years, and then when the kids were born, she stayed home. Oh. After the first daughter, was, uh, Tina was born, then she stayed home. And uh, we made it, even though I got hurt mm-hmm. and everything. I was off for a year, uh, but, uh, you know, well, they were tight, but we made it. Yeah. But we're from the old school. We, mm-hmm. uh, we know how to survive. And um, so your daughter, Tina, when was she born? Mm-hmm. Well, she's 50... But ask my okay. wife. <laughs> okay. uh-huh. I don't remember. All right. And then I, I cannot remember birthdays. Mm-hmm. Good thing my wife was around to tell me birthdays. <laughs> I can remember places and things, but not dates. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or names. Okay. okay. And then you have a, a younger daughter. You have two yeah. two children. Yeah. Oh. There's eight years apart between okay. the two. Okay. And they both. They both grew up in Lafayette. Did they go to the same? They grew, yeah, they both grew up here. They both went to uh, Alcalani's, yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, my grandsons there, Tina's, uh, 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 my two grandchildren went there, the third generation. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what did, what made you stay in Lafayette all these years? It's just it's a pretty nice town. Yeah. Um, the thing is that some of the people have ideas that are ridiculous in a way, and I get I get this from them. Uh, I see a lot of people. Uh, there's been a couple of places like up the hill here. Uh, they wanted to build in a little valley there. They wanted to make a house, and you know how they put those boards up to make it look like uh, um, like they're uh, you know, and this. There's a couple of apartments right across the street, or condominiums, or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I seen this lady out there. I'm going to go to the city. I don't want that there. And I says to her, I says, I look where she's born, or where she's living. She couldn't see it. I said, well, you can't see it. What did? I don't care. I don't want it there. And then I asked her how long you were here. She says, six years. And I says, you know, I didn't want you here either. <laughs> you know, I've yeah. been here all my yeah. life. I didn't want her here. But you mean you're going to deny somebody not to come live here if it's available for them to buy mm-hmm. or to build? I mean, what if we felt like that? Yeah. Hmm. Then she but wouldn't have our What problem. happens is <laughs> they get their peace and they don't want nothing else to change. Hmm. That is a fact. Hmm. Kind of. But that's the way it is. Yeah. And I, it's not the first one. I'd seen that even... I had gone to uh, the city councilman. Uh, um, Lafayette over here had an Ellis Grammar School right above here. Mm-hmm. If you remember that, you probably don't. There was a grammar school there. And I got there a little bit early, and there was this guy that was... I don't know what thing it was. Uh, he didn't want... There was a store coming into Lafayette, right over there where where now there's uh, the hotel, but it was just a place there, and he didn't want it there. And uh, why was he protesting that? And why, you know? And I asked him. I said, "How long has he been in Lafayette?" He says, seven years." And it all comes down that when they get their peace, they don't want nobody else to touch them. Mm. Well, if we felt like that, we wouldn't have anybody in Lafayette. Yeah. We may have talked about this already, but I, where is um, your wife's parents? Where are they from? Her uh, her mother's from Italy. Her father was born here. Okay, mm-hmm. but when it, during the flu, uh, nineteen eighteen or twenty or what it was, they had the epidemic of mm-hmm. flu. Um, the mother passed away, so. My father-in-law, uh, father, took the two boys, his two brothers, back to Italy so the family could raise, help raise the kids. And so my father-in-law 
um, uh, was there, and of course he got married over there, and that's where my wife was born. She didn't come over until she was six or seven years old. But he, my, my father was the last um, uh, ship to come over before World War II broke oh, over. Okay. And he got drafted. Mm-hmm. And being he was from Italy there and everything, they wanted him to be an interpreter. He says, no, I won't go there. Because, he says, I have family over there. And that time, Italy, you know, they were, uh, they didn't want to get beat up, so they sided mm-hmm. with the Germans, which I don't blame them, because they would have been crushed. And so... Um, they sent him to the Pacific against Japan, mm-hmm. and there's quite a he's got uh, quite a bunch of medals over there. He's got the silver stars, the bronze star, and everything. And I think out of uh, 270 or 260 soldiers, he was only about 15 or 16 that came back. And um, but he was uh, he's a fight he was a fighter. He he. You didn't want to mess with him, mm-hmm. and uh, very good-hearted, but uh, <laughs> being that kind of a guy. <laughs> yeah. What was his name? Vince. Vince, Vince Boultrey okay. was his name. That's my wife's maiden name. Okay. And uh, but uh, so uh, he came back here, and like I say, and my wife and her mother did not get to come here until after the war, 1946. Right. Did- do you remember when um, Vince, what he did, or do you know where he? Yeah, he lived? I knew. Uh, he he came uh, when he first came, when he uh, from Italy, and of course he was by himself. He was working for a, in Richmond, I think, for a pottery or making mm-hmm. dishes or something like that. And then he got drafted. Okay. And when he came back, he went to work for uh, a reinforced roofing company. He was a roofer. And then after some years of that, uh, in his late 50, he worked for the University of California as a gardener. He was a very good gardener, too. And those people that came from there, that's what they did. They're all dry farmers. They're all, uh, they know what to do. And that's why they survived. Yeah. Hmm. And do you, do you know about where he lived when he was here Vince? after the war? Yeah, he lived in Oakland first. Okay. Then, when I was in the service, he bought a house in Lafayette. And then uh, Lisa's mother passed away. And then uh, he got married again some time later. And uh, then he bought a place in Walnut Creek, was uh, like a, a duplex or a, and one single, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he was getting ready for retirement, so he moved to St. Helena. He lived up there. For quite a few years, he built his own house up there, and then uh, when he was getting, they were getting quite old there and everything, and uh, they moved back to Walnut Creek so they would be closer to us. Okay. Your wife, she was um, growing up in Oakland when she came, or she was. She started in Oakland. She went to school in Oakland. She went to Oakland Tech. Okay. And uh, and then when she came out here, she uh, she had finished school. She was working. She worked for Bank of America at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you think the, maybe this is a difficult question, but what do you think the, the biggest change you've seen over all these years you've been here, or the some of the most significant ones you've seen over the... Biggest change is the growth. The growth. Yeah. Um, for good or bad or worse is the growth. I think the... The thing is, is still trying to keep it as a community, a small place, but it's not. It's getting crowded, and uh, uh, it's still a good town. Don't get me wrong. And uh, out of the three, they call it Triarindam Rogan mm-hmm. here. Um, I think this is the better one because of getting out. Mm-hmm. If you want to go inland or out, where. Arinda's okay with that, but Moraga's kind of locked in, mm-hmm. and they've got a problem. Years ago, that that overpass by the tunnel over there was supposed to go into uh, Moraga and come out on the south side of Walnut Creek, mm-hmm. but then you get the people again. They don't want, mm-hmm. well, I got my piece. I don't want anybody else yeah. coming. That's what happens, mm-hmm. and they lost their right-of-way. Mm-hmm. Now they're locked in, mm-hmm. so... 
if you want to say you want to trade this house for the one in Moraga, I would tell you no. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fight traffic to get out of town. Yeah. And if you if you look at the towns, uh, Lafayette now, in, in which they're they really don't believe in growth like Walnut Creek or Concord. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it, there's more stores in Lafayette. You've got, look how many different mm-hmm. grocery yeah. stores and whatever, and banks and so forth. You don't have that in Moraga or, or Rinda. Yeah. I think there, in Moraga, there's the, the one grocery store and the, the one. You haven't like got banks. Yeah. Like and I, when I go into Lafayette, I can see that a lot of them are not from Lafayette. Mm. I can tell the difference, you know. I'm not saying no that I'm against it. No, that's yeah, not my point. My point is that you, that's why I wouldn't move to Moraga. Mm-hmm. I looked over there, but I didn't buy that. Right. So when were you looking over in Moraga? When when I was here? And, well, I was looking for a home and what I could afford at that time. We, mm-hmm. bought it. we looked all over. Oh, okay. And um, the road basically is still the same as it was when I was... Mm. In the 40s. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. If you look at the road, but if you really look at it good, you look at Moraga Road coming towards Lafayette. If you look at how wide it is, they're looking for four lanes. But when it gets to the limits of Lafayette or Orinda, it goes into two. Mm. When they had the right of way to go all the way through, and they, they gave it away. Mm. It could have went out... Towards the tunnel or towards, uh, what is it, uh, 680, 680. They would have been, boom, on the freeway. Wow. Huh. They gave it away. They lost yeah. it. Interesting. So, I mean, it, take it for what it was worth, but that's the way I see it. Yeah. Huh. That, that's a little bit of history. Huh? Yeah. I, I mean, the, you're, you're just getting an individual's opinion. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm giving you my opinion. I'm 80 years old. I can care less what they think yeah. about me or not. <laughs> I get so much information. I'm, hmm. Sorry, but, I'm just absorbing it. And, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, the history, uh, yeah, the history that I've been here, um, basically, uh, um, uh like I say, it's a good town here. Uh, uh, you know, some of the people are a little bit ornery, but that's okay. Uh, you know, hey, everybody's going to have their own thing. Mm-hmm. There's room for everybody. But uh, um, but it's just like they're having a one of development over here. And uh, so they're going to put about 45 homes, they say, right across from Akalani. Mm-hmm. And the good thing they're doing is there's not enough parking in Lafayette. That's one of the biggest problems. And at least they're going to make a parking lot there for 75 cars and then uh, some kind of a field for lacrosse or soccer or Mm. something like that. And a doggy park and a little park. That's fine, you know. But uh, uh, otherwise, you know, as long as they, they keep it the way it is. You know, you don't get a lot of mass like that. Mm-hmm. Then it then it spoils it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still you still got a little bit of the country feeling here, a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, not like it was, but yeah. it's there. Is that something that you you really enjoy that country feel, even though it's well, slightly yeah. developed? In fact, yeah. I bought a, I bought a place. Uh, it's up in Calaveras County. It's a very low population uh, county, and. Uh, 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 the reason, that's why I bought there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started looking up by Grass Valley, and when they told me the population up there, uh, it was bigger than Lafayette. I got out of the chair, and I left the real estate office, and he says, where are you going? I says, I'm not buying here. That's bigger than where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. So I went this way, and uh, I got my toys. I got my dad's first tractor that was in here in Lafayette. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a 1929. Really? Caterpillar, yeah. And it runs like a clock. I mean, you still use it eventually? I use it, yeah. I use it. I use it now. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) What else do you have of your your fathers or your parents that you still... Well, unfortunately, uh, uh, through one thing or another, um, we let go. We should have held on to it. I could have donated it to the History Center. 
I had the the washing machine, wash machine that was my mother's, and she only used one washing machine all the years. Wow. Even when she when she uh, lived in her house up until she died, she had that one washing machine, a May old Maytag, square ones, iron, and that's all she would use. Wow, and it ran. I should have. I had the whole thing, even the 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 contract it was like a bond. Oh, yeah. I still have it. Wow. And uh, and I should have kept it and donated it down there, but I had brought it up to the country up there. And uh, but uh, things were very simple uh, mm-hmm. when I was growing up. We didn't have any TV. You know, we didn't have any of that stuff. And most people don't know this. Alkalani's, they wore uniforms when I went there. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. The girls, especially. Not it was a uniform in force, but it was there. And all the girls went by it. Same way with the guys. They didn't wear no shorts. There was, they all wore dresses, no pants, and they all wore dresses. There were five days a week, and um, on Thursday, they could wear something else, another dress. But they didn't wear pants. They wore dresses. And that's, that's the way. White blouse with a, a navy blue skirt. Okay. Right. And the guys wore, I wore Levi's okay. with a sports shirt. And some guys wore cords mm-hmm. and whatever. Then the denims came out, the blue denim. Then some wore that. Depends. Mm-hmm. You know. okay. But that's the way it was. Mm. Then it didn't take very long. I guess after a few years it changed. Okay. This is, I was telling you about that. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of warranty they used to give out. Hmm. Address. Okay. July 13th, 1936. Maytag Company. Well, signed by the president. <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, the warranty on the wash machine. Oh, for God's sake. My mother kept it. Uh, the address on it. Is there an address on it? P.O. Yeah. Box. That's it. P.O. Box 270. In Berkeley. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. yeah. It's Berkeley. No, no. The address up. Uh, yeah. Maybe that but it's supposed to be Lafayette. Oh. That was uh, Box 270, and they put Berkeley. That's where they bought it over there. There was no store to buy that wash <laughs> machine out here. <laughs> and this is the flag that my dad got. When he first came here, and they gave him when he became a citizen. Oh, wow. So when, I'm sorry, I, I, you may have said this already. When did he become a citizen around approximately? I think a very, very early in, very in early. Uh, when he the, came the here. Citizen, I think it might be in the book. Huh? I think it's in the book. The book. The city, his his uh, citizenship. Yeah. Oh, there well, somewhere. The, okay. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, um, it's changed. You asked the question about a change. Yes, I, now that I think about it, very much so. Because all these people in these valleys here, where all these farmers, they were all big pieces of land. There was no houses in there. And now, for example, Akalani's here, that what they, uh, it was built in 41. But the Rossies up here, his brother used to farm that land there. Okay, so then when they just, they were going to build the school, he moved out. He moved out to Clayton and had to start farming out there. So basically, if you came in here and looked and went around, you would see a farmhouse here and a farm. So there's where your change is. Okay. That's where it really, you know, now you don't recognize anything. And... I, I think I told you about the house that we had, mm-hmm. and it's still here in Lafayette. Mm-hmm. But you would never recognize it. I know where it is. Uh, what they did, the house was so well built with heavy beams, and I had told you it was built by square nail. Mm-hmm. But what they did, they made a two-story out of it. Now, the house inside was 10-foot ceilings, not eight like this. Mm-hmm. And they they put it two stories, and it's still there, that same house. And it, they just moved it off the ranch onto Thompson Road. Wow. Okay. Huh. Do you go by there often? or Not at all. No, no. I know. I've, You've seen it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know where it is, but I don't bother. Mm-hmm. You, you wouldn't recognize it. No. Oh, okay. 
you know, they've changed, you know, yeah, yeah. they remodeled, they changed something so much mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, the, but um, they said, get your dad's thing over there, the, the medals he got, because he was asking me about it. And, uh, but, uh, but it's still a good town. It's still very good. They call it a city now, but I still consider it a town. Consider it a town. It's always a little town, no matter what? Okay. Purple Heart. And this was the flag that was on the casket. Oh, okay. Wow. This is from your father. Yeah, so this is his, uh, that's the silver star, this is the bronze star. And the next one there, that's the congressional after that one. Mm. And here's the titles to the property, you know. No, here it is, yeah. Do you see that? Did not. For Lorenzo. Hmm. Box 312, Walnut Creek, California. Deposit of $15,000. Hmm? Deposit of fifteen thousand dollars for a hundred acres. <laughs> it probably cost sixteen. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Do we have a price a cost on the whole thing? That's the old train. There's a train. Lafayette, Sacramento, Northern. Where did that go through? And hmm? it came through Lafayette. The the yeah. train. Yeah. Okay. It came. It used to come from Walnut Creek, and. Up where Olympic Boulevard is, and it mm. comes through there. It would come into Lafayette that way. Oh, wow. And then it, it would continue on from Lafayette and go into Moraga. Hmm. That's the way it came. Wow. Oh, here's the... Oh, yeah. yeah. January 11th, 1902. Is that what I'm reading? Up 1932. Right here is $89,000. Or, no. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine dollars. Eighty-nine fifty is the escrow fee, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, this was my dad's uh, brother. Okay. He's one of the brothers. This is my dad there. And what is? What is this group here? Is that their family or is that their yeah. workers? Uh, this house here is actually up in Release Valley Road here. That was, um, let's see if I can see. Mm, he must be taking the picture. I don't see him there. Yeah. Who are you looking for? Now, this one here, see right here, this house here used to go up these stairs, the house is above. Now, below there was a basement. And this is, must be a holiday, and they're fooling around there. But anyway, um, you go down underneath there, and he dug that out by hand. <laughs> but... Um, what, in a wine cellar down there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, sir. The sister surfing is here. Surfing gave me this information, so it must be right. I mean, Angelo gave me this information. No. Yeah. But I don't. I can't. I can't. He's hiding. <laughs> Who are you looking for? I'm looking for surfing. Right here. Oh, okay. He, he's done. He must be. He gave me the name and order, so it must be him. Yeah. It looks like him. No, that. Yeah. Louis Top Pers- row. Louis Persico. Yeah. Giobatta. Mangini. No. This is. This. He made a mistake here. This is Tony Persico. Oh, now I gotta wipe it out. <laughs> Oh, See, he put Louis here. Uh, Louis. Yeah, he said Louis. And then Louis. Yeah. Well, uh, this is actually Tony Pasico. Okay. Well, maybe we need to fix it. These, these were all people that used to live in this valley, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a lot more, but there's... Uh,
So. Let's see what's on the next page. Huh? Registered list, 1936. Some of this information was his. Mm -hmm. Some of it I went to the History Center, the county, okay. and got these pictures. And that's why they have that label there. Those photos were oh, okay. from the archives there. So most of it, oh, this history was, was the research that I did in looking for these photographs. And these are all the translations? No, that's not, that's that's not what I just wrote that, oh, okay. but um, Things like this that. is a translation. Okay. So it's written in a dialect that really no one speaks anymore. Hmm. Now, this is all my mother's family, Okay. which are none here except my mother. The rest hmm. are all in Italy. Okay. And they're the ones that, that um, now own the house that your father's family was in. Is that, am I remembering that correct? Or? Well, the, uh, the, the old house, uh, of course, has been split up. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the one where my mother was is owned uh, by um, uh, one of the, who owns it? Oh, um, the one that came here. What the heck? Luigi. Luigi. Yeah, Luigi. Yeah, yeah, he owns the house. Well, not him anymore. He passed away, so uh, the family owns it. I don't know. This is the home in Italy? Yeah. Hmm. That's as good as the communion. Yeah, first communion. May 14, 1944. There's a lot at school you were asking about. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, the reunion. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> from Akalani's 1953, what, a few months ago? 60, September. September. 60-year reunion. And there was mm -hmm. about, there was about, uh, I'd say 70 of us, right? 60, 70 of us? Well, there were 70, but then that's with spouses. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Remember the story about this, Dad, with your dad keeping this in his wallet? So that he would know the road signs, because he couldn't. And he wrote it in, in oh, Italian. Yeah, got to translate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, he didn't know how to read the signs, yeah. so he wrote it. Interesting. <laughs> huh? yeah. The old firehouse. I remember that. I used to walk by it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, did you tell them about the girls at Akalan you had to wear their uniforms? Yeah, mm -hmm. them about yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, well, there's not too many of us left around. Hmm. I, now it's preserved. So huh? now, now your story is preserved. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, here's the sale. We didn't. My my parents didn't even own a camper camera, mm -hmm. so we didn't have many photos. And somebody probably took them uh, that came over, you know. To, but we didn't we didn't take any pictures. Kind of too bad in a way. But uh, um, I thought mm -hmm. that is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess when I go, it'll all go with me. I don't know. <laughs> But I, I, I have, uh, there's a lot of good memories about this town, but I also remember a lot of things, you know, all of a sudden it comes to me, so, oh, yeah, I remember that, you know, and mm -hmm. you forget about things over the years. And uh, once in a while I kind of get a big kick out of it, <laughs> driving the Model A's and, you know, they have Model A's. What is the Model A's? Yeah. Okay. When were on, you doing that? On the farm we had two Model T's. Wow, okay. Yeah, Model T Forks. Mm -hmm. You know, the one with three pedals. Yeah, yeah. And we used to, one we had converted and made a saw. Used to cut wood for the house, you know. 
because we didn't have uh, uh, like you have now gas coming in yeah. and a thing like that. In fact, we just had well water. There was no city water, and uh, the heat source was the stove. And um, although we had we had a uh, um, and the water in the house, which mm-hmm. my dad brought in, and we had a, a water heater, but it's not like the water heaters today. It was all galvanized, to, you know, or mm-hmm. steel, and no no thing wrapped around it to keep it warm. <laughs> the thing was running all the time, almost, and it would run on propane. But uh, we were comfortable, and uh, it was a lot of work, but there was not much entertainment mm-hmm. uh, we used to get a lot of company mm-hmm. and on the farm there uh, my folks had built a, a bocce ball court wow. okay. and uh, every Sunday people would come and they'd come from as far away as Oakland and they'd come out and they play and every game was finished the first thing they do is they go down to the basement and have their wine and they come back and play some more and we used, my dad used to make wine. He was a good winemaker. And uh, never sold any wine, never sold any grapes either. They used it all. <laughs> but that's the way it was. Any last thoughts you want to add? Yeah, I haven't got anything else yeah. to say. Okay. Unless I can think of something. <laughs> okay. Well, I've, I've got wonderful stuff here. so I don't know how it's going to come out. but yeah. We'll see. I'm sure it'll be great. And um, let's see. The interview ends at 5.22 p.m. And towards the end of the interview, Fred's wife, Lisa, and his daughter, Tina, were also on the recording. <laughs>